So you did a mock draft, um, and, and we're going to take a look at um, a couple of the spots um, that you have the Browns picking out. One of these includes a trade. All right. Uh, so at 44, um, you have the Browns taking Logan Hall. You talked about how much you like him. Uh, so briefly, what do you think Logan Hall brings? And then we'll go into um, who you have the Browns taking with a, a couple of other picks. I think he brings a lot of good athletic elements to the table, versatility, length, quickness. He's got some power to his game. I think what he brings is, an, is a pass rush element to the interior. And again, a guy who could play outside if need be as a bigger defensive end in that situation. There's a lot to like about Logan Hall's game. And, you know, he's not going to be your traditional defensive tackle, but if you're looking for a disruptive player who can fill a couple roles, I think Logan Hall can be your guy. Now you have the Browns trading up, uh, so 78 and 118 to move up to 61, um, and you haven't taken wide receiver Alec Pierce. Tell me what you like about that and, and how you weighed as far as that trade goes. Well, I've kind of played around with all these trades in uh, the PFF mock draft simulator to make sure they were making sense. Um, and this was one that kind of made sense. And I just talked about, you know, what receivers are going to be there at 78 potentially if the Browns don't take one at 44. I kind of try to put that scenario in mind. And when you look at Alec Pierce, he's a guy that I think could sneak into the end of the second round, maybe early third round. I don't know if he would be there. And what sticks out to me about Alec Pierce is he is a pretty dynamic receiver. He's six foot three, 211 pounds, was tremendous in the NFL combine way back in way back earlier in the draft process. He's, he's obviously a big play threat, got some good speed, maybe not as agile as you'd like him to be. He's got some questions about separation, but I think with a quarterback like Deshaun Watson, who's pretty accurate and he knows how to throw guys open, you want to have dynamic players who can stretch the field. I think Pierce can do that from day one. He can also be a good red zone threat pretty early in his career. And he kind of hoped that work having a guy like Amari Cooper there for a guy like Pierce, whoever, or whoever the Browns draft that they'll kind of learn more about, learn more from in terms of separation and nuance when it comes to running routes, because I think those are pretty underrated skills. All right. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. Couple late, a couple rounds later in the draft, you have the Browns taking a tight end. Uh, Jalen Watermeyer from um, uh, Wiedemeyer, rather from uh, Texas A&M. What did you like about him, and and what intrigues you with Wiedemeyer? Well, about two months ago, if you had told me that Jalen Widermeyer was going to make it all the way to day three, I would have called you crazy because I thought he was the number one tight end in this class, right up there with uh, with Colorado State's uh, Trey McBride. Then his then the offseason testing happened. I mean, Jalen Widermeyer did not test very well at all. The 40, his forty time was five point oh one seconds a vertical jump of only 25 and a half inches. That's not good testing. And obviously as a result, the stock plummeted, but I think, you know, with a player like him, you kind of have to go back to the film and what he did on the field and what he did on the field, Texas A&M was he was productive, had a, had 500 plus yards receiving. He had a very good game against Alabama in that big upset win on, in prime time. Um, this season was obviously not easy for him because a&M played most of the season with a backup quarterback after starter Haynes King went down with an injury very early. Um, but when you get to the sixth round, I think you look for players that are either incredible athletes or productive guys. And I think this is a guy that you could certainly take a flyer on and see, you know, was it just a bad day of testing? You know, is he better than he tested or you know, is that is that a sign of things to come? Because again, if it doesn't work out, it's just a six round pick and the success rate for six round picks, you know, that's obviously is not very high. I know they've gotten plenty out of Donovan Peoples-Jones and Demetri Felton early on, but that's more of the exception than the norm.